podcast. Podcast. All right, I have a little introduction uh, for you. I have it all written down. Well, isn't this your first podcast? This is the very first so podcast. Why don't you introduce yourself? Like, who are you? Well, we'll, get, we'll get into that. Should after. I ask? <laughs> should I interview you? <laughs> well, I, I honestly, I feel like uh, I feel like you probably honestly have more experience with this kind of stuff anyway. So, I mean. Um, if you want to teach me how to introduce myself, that'd be that'd What's, be great. Have you got a name for the podcast? It's called the Desk Jockey Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Desk Jockey <laughs> Podcast. My name is Tim, and here with me today is Cam Blake. Mm-hmm. Um, welcome to the show. Exactly. There you go. That was perfectly done. Thank you. That was well done. I'm going to take notes. Um, that's what this paper is for. I'm also going to be taking notes on all the um, things I can learn from you today. But anyway, one good note is to put your paper on the desk, then you don't hear it rustling the whole time. That is such a good idea. Yeah. See, I've done See, this. I've done so, this before. You're so smart. I'm, See, I'm 34. I, 34, 34 years 34. old. 34. I've done this. It's like my first rodeo. Wow. Damn. Have you, have you been on many podcasts? <laughs> I've been on a few. I, um, I'm a regular on uh, Justice's podcast. Oh, the, the J-Pod. The J-Pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like that's a great podcast. It's is really good. He's a I good interviewer. To, yeah. yeah, he's really good. I listened to the one with uh, with Neil. Oh yeah, um, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I haven't listened to too many other ones, but that one caught my eye. You should listen to one of mine. I would love yeah, to. Yeah, I would love to. I definitely will. But anyway, I have an interview. I have a introduction for you. Okay. Um. Hopefully, this reads well. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna Do read you want it. me to read it. I'm gonna read it verbatim. You okay. want to read it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You read it. <laughs> this man needs no introduction. But this is for those who may need a brief reminder of the impact this individual has had on the music scene in Vancouver. He is the creator of one of the coolest labels, King Fisher Blues, who's worked with artists such as Peach Pit, Winona Forever, Babe Corner, Gum Country, and many, many more. Each year, Tim, with the help of others, including our mutual friend, Ronnie May, put mm-hmm. on one of the best shows this city has to offer, the King Fisher Blues Christmas Show. Yeah. The show gives 100% of its profits to 1-800-SUICIDE and Crisis Center for BC. Over the years, these events have raised thousands of dollars for this extremely important organization. Tim is also a local artist slash poet who has released four albums under the name Tim the Mute and is working on a brand new project as we speak. Timothy also works at the best record store in Vancouver, maybe even the world, Neptune Records. Yeah. After many years of hard work, Tim has yet to acquire the title Employee of the Month. That's true. That I believe true. one day he will. Um, I know I'm missing a few things, but hopefully we'll get to go over them through the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what that was think? that was amazing. That was great. That's that was all way accurate. better than I. Yeah. How was that? Do you think yeah, that was yeah. an accurate depiction of? Uh, That's perfect. Yeah. Basically, my name's Tim. I run a record label called Kingfisher Blues. I play in a band called Tim the Mute. And, um, yeah, I'm about to release my fifth album, so I'll be fifth sure to plug album. it on the show. That's amazing. What's yeah. it going to be called? Do you have a name for it yet? I haven't released the name yet. Mm. It's coming, coming okay. soon. Okay, so everyone look out for that. Yeah. All right. Well, I have some some questions here, uh, just a couple of things to, to go over. I wanted to ask about the Christmas show because uh, we actually had the chance to to be the book club, had, a, had the chance to be on the, the Christmas show. Um, yeah, you haven't really introduced yourself yet. Okay, so. I, am, I am Cam. I, uh, I'm a solo musician, I'm also the drummer and producer and uh, mixing engineer for book club. Um, and this is the Death Jockey podcast that I'm starting to, you know, talk to local musicians and people that are just in the scene that, you know, like to make a difference and um, give them a, a platform to talk about themselves and also uh, what they, you know, hope to achieve and do. That's kind of fantastic. Main, that's kind of the main idea. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about the Christmas show. Um, so when was the first Christmas show? I think it was like fourteen years ago or something. Or you're thirteen. Uh, it was two thirteen, I think. Wow. It was two thousand and seven. Where was, was that? that? Fourteen then. Yeah. Um, I'm terrible at math. I can't do that. Yeah, it was like 14 years ago. We had it like in, um, like a friend's basement. Mm. Yeah. Do you know Kaylin, who I do the uh, bookstore with? Oh, yeah. I also have a bookstore. So make sure you check out my bookstore, Reasons to Live Books. Great bookstore. Great bookstore. And record store, too, right? And records. We sell records, too. Yeah. Yeah. We actually filmed the uh, book club music video, uh, the 
before, but like the song Blood Club. Yeah, I didn't even know you guys that well then. I couldn't tell the difference between all the tall guys. It's like we all just three have guys, long hair three and guys like, that all look the same. And yeah, then Jack. So yeah. it's really easy for me to like. Well, Jack is like he was shorter than Ethan and I. Ethan and I feel like, especially with the cloaks on. <clears throat> Zach is pretty tall as well. Zach is tall, yeah, especially yeah. with the cloaks. You, yeah. it would be almost impossible to tell us a de- uh, tell us apart. But now I know all you guys. You do from each Individuals. other. Individuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, great bookstore. And um so, we, so yeah, we did so the, the first we, show. We did the first show in Kaylin's basement. Yeah. yeah. Um it was like at a house out on commercial drive mm. and we just had a bunch of our friends play. Some of these people still play the show now. Wow. So like um some some of my best friends, um, we all got together and did the show, just a big Christmas party. Mm-hmm. Then the next year we thought well, we'll do it in, like, a cafe or something. Yeah. So we did it, like, at a cafe. Um, my girlfriend at the time worked at a cafe, and we did it there. Yeah. And then we did um, another one the next year. Mm. Um, I think it was in someone's apartment, like, like in some, like, random apartment building. And yeah. then the fourth year, I think, was the first year where we were, like, Okay, we're gonna have Let's to actually like, get like a venue, venue. And, yeah, because like more people kept showing up, and you're like, hey, we actually have to like upgrade our. Yeah, our, we we our ended space. up with like uh like seven bands on the bill or something. Yeah, and we were like, this is ridiculous. Like <laughs> we actually made money that night, which yeah. was like shocking, which is unbelievable. Uh, we had like I think we that was the first year we did like the free seven inch. So we have like a free seven inch. Um, That's so cool. And then it's got like a different. Christmas building, like a miniature Christmas village building on it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then every year you like collect the free single and you get like a, like you build a village. Yeah. By like collecting all the buildings. Well, you actually make like actual villages, right? Every, yeah. I don't, every year. I like, or, like you don't, I have like, make, a, the I don't pieces, make the pieces, but like you put them together and yeah. make like a little Christmas village. If anyone, um, if any of my friends are watching this, Lee Max is the brand I collect. Don't get me no fucking Department 56. I'm only interested in Lee Max brand Christmas Village. Okay, okay. None of that good, cheap good. shit, okay? I That has always been my uh, go-to whenever I'm building my Christmas Villages, too. Mm-hmm. I, I've, uh, yeah. Um, but that's actually not the only thing you collect. You collect... Uh, you collect watch. I know you col- you collect a yeah. lot of things, right? I, yeah, yeah. I like, collect. you collect watches. You collect uh, mugs. Um, are there any other, like, strange items? I collect items? Furbies. Furbies? Yeah, I've got uh, quite a few Furbies. Um, right, like, is that's that from like, before you were born. Yeah, but they were like I'm dating myself. Yeah, right yeah, now. <laughs> they yeah. were like uh, little furry gremlin creatures. Who, okay, they like you can teach them to talk. It was like really early, sort of. Uh, yeah, I I wouldn't say like AI, but it like. Uh, oh, I think I, do, I think like I do know what these words. are like the like the yellow eyes. They kind of like yeah, they have like open. They've and, got weird eyes. They, and they yeah, have a, a little beak. I think I have. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. seen those. They, they yeah. like ite is Furby for yes. I think know? there's like modern Furbies that they. Oh make. yeah, I'm yeah. still buying them. You still buying the new <laughs> yeah. ones? That's sick. How yeah. much? How much does like they're a, like about a hundred bucks uh, for if you want to get the Star Wars Furbaka or whatever. Yeah, Furbaka. That's great. Um. So other than Furbies and watches and and I collect like um, like British pottery marks. So what does that mean? I like British ceramics from like the thirties up to like the eighties. Oh wow! I collect. And how um, did you like? How do you get into like just collect? Like, do you like? Obviously, you just start having them, and then you're like, I just want to <laughs> keep getting more. But like, yeah, how of. is it like? How do you... I, I'm I'm like a natural enthusiast of of stuff. So yeah, I love um. Yeah, when when I like discover something I like, then I'll learn everything about it. Yeah. Then you like with any sort of um, collector, you go through like an acquisition phase where you're just like, you like discover you like something, and mm-hmm. then you think I'm gonna buy every single thing I can. Yeah. I'm gonna read every article. I'm going on YouTube. I'm going on Reddit. I'm gonna find out everything I can about yeah. my new favorite thing. Yeah. And then, and it's amazing that you can do that too. You know what I mean? Like you can just like research something on like Google and just like learn everything you want to know about yeah. a certain topic. You know. And at thirty four, I'm old enough. Like before, like I remember growing up without Google and yeah. stuff. And yeah. Yeah. And it, I remember like I got into um, like this one really like a ten hour movie that Hallmark made for. <laughs> uh, I think it was Hallmark. No, it, yeah, it could have been Hallmark. It was uh, called the Tenth Kingdom. Yeah, 
is like a 10 hour long made for TV movie without ads. It's about seven and a half hours. Oh my gosh. And I got so into it. I like watched it over yeah. and over again. It was across three DVDs. Yeah. And I, um, there was only one website about it. Like <laughs> these days, if like a, someone put out like a 10 hour movie, there'd be like a Reddit forum. There'd yeah. be like, uh, Instagram yeah. accounts and stuff like you know if you only have to get into like any random celebrity who has like hundreds oh. of fan oh, pages totally and stuff. totally like back then it was like one website there's like one person in Germany made like a GeoCities page about <laughs> like the Tenth Kingdom and I like read it over and over again but like there was no other info you know yeah so n- now there's like if I like when I started getting into watches I was like oh, wow, I'd really like to buy a watch. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I think I was sort of, you know, I I was looking for, like, some sort of, like, accessory that would, like, I'd be able to express myself. And I thought, oh, you really want a watch? And I messaged one of my friends who I know is into watches. Mm -hmm. And he said, Tim, I know what you're like. He's like, there's so much stuff out there. He's like, you're going to go nuts. He's like, look, start with, like, Seiko, Citizen, yeah. You know, there's like some cool Timex reissues. Yeah. He's like, just like have a look around. Mm-hmm. Trust me, you'll find something you like. Yeah. And then you kind of find more like niche kind of like yeah, r- random you brands. Know, like, you have and... hundreds of watches yeah. and you're like obsessed with like different yeah. movements. If, can... Also, if anyone wants to keep up on uh, Tim's watch collecting, go yeah. follow his Instagram account, uh, Tim's on Time. Absolutely. I'm At Tim's yes. on Time on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. account. <laughs> I. I how like that's probably it probably doesn't have all of your watches on there right like oh no I'm, like you probably have I feel like you have like a bunch more just like sitting in a vault somewhere yeah, yeah. waiting to get well I drop un- a new un- post like every day you know yeah 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 I, I, when I run out of watches I'm I'll be like worried mm. I gotta have a backlog of stuff to post yeah, yeah yeah totally so do you have like drafts like oh yeah of your yeah, of your yeah, watches yeah. and then you're like oh today I'm gonna post a new this shit day. that I took like photos of last year. That when it was like fall, and I was like, yeah. I've got it saved. So when it's fall, I can post it again because yeah. I was like, I can't post this picture in the middle of summer because it's clearly fall in the photo, yeah. you know? Totally. Yeah, I've got drafts going back like a, a year now. That's amazing. Yeah. That's dedication. Oh, yeah. I'm That's a- <laughs> dedication to the game. I can appreciate that. I thought about doing like a different Instagram where I, I just review like, uh, random stuff that i that i like yeah. or whatever yeah. like i could review like a because then you could have all of them in one place it'd be just yeah. like tim's collection of of random of items yeah yeah, yeah. It could be like one day i could review like a like a vegan eggs benedict at yeah like meat on maine and then the totally. next day i could review like yeah uh, like a banker's lamp or something you totally. Know? Yeah. totally i was looking at a banker's lamp the other day you've got <laughs> yeah. one i don't know if the the pod listeners can see it but we've got a banker's lamp i think it up. i think it will be in the shot um i think it is yeah it uh i was thinking about if i should have it on or not um it, it had a weird glow when i was turning it on so oh, i'm yeah. just gonna keep it off but um yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about changing the lamp. I'm not sure. I, I like it. You like the lamp? That's the first thing I, I thought. Okay, I was okay. just looking at buying, like, maybe a really bougie version of it. Yeah. Um, original BTC is, like, one Ooh. of my favorite lamp companies. Mm. I collect lamps as well, believe it oh. or not. So, like, uh, they do a baker's I love lamp. It's, like, I, that's 1500 amazing. bucks or something. So, like, when you walk into your, your household, like, your apartment, is it just, like, there's just things there's everywhere? wall-to-wall stuff. Don't, don't tell my landlords. So yeah. <laughs> It's just like stuff everywhere. I'll, she can't watch the podcast. I'll I'll block her ID yeah, from you. it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my apartment has like just tons of stuff. It's mm-hmm. like an archaeological dig where you yeah. can go through different <laughs> phases of stuff that I've like collected. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. That's lovely. <laughs> I I I always like I, like they're obviously I collect like music things, you know what I mean? Like every time I see something like fun that's like musical, I like the you know the thrift or anything, I'll mm-hmm. just buy it. But like it, it does sound like very um it sounds like rewarding to have like a collection of like a very specific thing that like, you know, isn't like a major part of your life, but just something that you're interested in, you know? Yeah. And then just to have it like just just to be able to have a collection at your house and it's just like, you know, huge like you can just walk in and be like i have like 200 <laughs> 300 watches just waiting here i can pick whichever one i want i mean it's a great feeling yeah yeah, yeah. it sounds lovely do you what do you wear the same watch like more than once 
<laughs> or yeah, do you there's just, probably like, do you like to do you have like a few favorites or do yeah, you just kind of probably like uh 30 or 40 like watches like that are really like nice ones. ones yeah yeah, yeah. The one I'm wearing today, this is a Omega Constellation. Throw it in the, throw it like up a little bit. Either, yeah, either or. The thing. Yeah. This was my grandfather's watch. Actually, oh, wow. it's the only thing that I've inherited from any family member. Oh, um, my gosh. When I got into watches, my mom said to me, you know, I've got your, your Gong Gong's uh, watch somewhere. And I was like, oh, yeah? Like, what was it? And she's like, oh, it's like an Omega. And I was like. You're like I need oh. that watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, and then I would, like tried to play it cool, and I like, she was like, "Oh, I'll give it to you like at Christmas or something." Mm-hmm. And I was like, like the week before Christmas, I was like, "Hey, did you find that watch?" Yeah. And she's like, "Oh, I'll look for it." I was like, "Okay, like, you know, like I tried to be cool about it." When yeah. I, when I got it, I was absolutely blown away. It's in like perfect condition. It's I had it really yeah. nice. It's had, really really nice. I had it fully serviced by uh, uh, Roldorf & Co. in Vancouver. Do you have a watch guy? I do. Kino. Kino Messiah. King Kino. Oh. Uh, represent for Kino at Kino the Watchmaker on Instagram. That's such like Love a that guy. that's like such a um like a classic thing to just have like guys for things. You I've know got a I mean? guy for everything. Like and it, it you know not necessarily needs to be a guy yeah. but you know um just like having a guy for for things you know oh, yeah. i love that i yeah, love i've that. got everything like i've got a guy if you need a bucket of pig's blood mm. all the way to like a guy if you need like a statuary yeah or something. well that, that's something that the introduction misses you know what i mean yeah. that's something that the introduction <laughs> misses add, add is that, that. <laughs> you you have the pig's blood guy yeah i've got a guy so for that everything. was that was a crucial part that i forgot unfortunately yeah. that was why i added the end because i was like there's something else and that was the thing that I was missing was the, the pig's blood guy. I've got a cobbler. I've got a jeweler. I've got a watchmaker. <laughs> you know, you got to. I need more guys. I don't have. I have like, you know, I got like a car guy. I'm you your know? record guy. You've got a record you guy. You are my record guy. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe like you're like the guy who is like, you know, multi, multi guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy for a few people. I've yeah. Been, I've been different guys for different people. Yeah. But you're also, like, when it comes to, you know, if I need, uh, uh, you know, like, exotic uh, bird meat or something. Yes. <laughs> then, I got you. Then you're my guy for the other guy. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a toucan guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got no. toucan meat? <laughs> We're not eating the tukey tukey bird. No, 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 we don't do that here. Not, not on the Death Jockey podcast. We don't do that. What's this podcast about? I thought I explained it at the start. It's just, it's just <laughs> honestly, it it's it's very like loose, but the general like idea is like a like retro office kind of vibe. You know, that's why I had the calculator <laughs> and the little um, clock there. But uh, I forgot to clock in. Should I? Oh, I should put a little. Am I, at work I should right put now? a little punch. Yeah, you at, should have oh, a punch card. That the is be, that is a great idea. We can put this in before, but like as you guys heard earlier at the beginning of the pod, <laughs> we ran a punch card. So yeah, that yeah. was we just came up with it now. Yeah, went back in time and added yes. it in. Yes, we did. I brought a watch for you. Oh my gosh! Here we go. I. This is a classic. You inquired about it. This is the I Casio. Did. I, I, DM, I DM'd him because I saw it on his Instagram and I thought it was lovely. This is the oh, God tier watch. Everyone so knows cool. the Casio F91W is the guy. Look oh, at get that. that. Get that on Look there. at that. We'll put that on you. Oh, beautiful. Are you in the shot? Oh, there yeah. You we'll have it up. Yeah, yeah. He's Stay in frame there. Yeah, here we go. Oh, is that a little loose? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's nice. Right. That's, that's snug. Light. That's beautiful. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Show it to the camera. Look at that. Look at oh that. My God. Impressionable viewers. Look at my watch. Now I'm stunned on everybody. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is, It's in really good condition. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I saw some on, like, Facebook Marketplace, and I was kind of like, like, I don't know. They were, like, destroyed. The screen was all scratched up. This is I take care of lovely. my stuff. You yeah, do. Yeah. I bought that new, and it feels uh, so. It I feels right. Wore it. How does it look? You look great. I, do I look good with it? It fits with, like, the office. Exactly. Like, that was one of the reasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm going to wear it out. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I'm not, like, a, a huge watch guy. I do mm. have uh, I do have one other watch that I'm thinking about getting. I actually I need to inquire oh, inquire about that as yeah, well. Yeah, ask me about it. Um, 
I have this watch. It's just it needs like a new battery and it needs mm-hmm. like a little bit of work done on it. But anyway, I've I've got a guy. Don't worry about it. I'll you got take, the guy. I'll take we'll it worry, we'll worry about this. Yeah, this is yeah. Uh, this is post podcast business. But um, um, yeah, I wanted uh, just an everyday watch, you know, mm-hmm. and also one that would look good for the for the pod. You know, I feel like I'm going. It you, really it really works. Have yeah. you seen uh, Office Space? Yes. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite movies. It's so so good. that's why I wanted to look like uh, Milton. You know, oh, um, yeah. Melvin's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. With, the, with the stapler. <laughs> yeah, with the stapler, yeah, yeah. exactly. That was what in- inspired the... Uh, well, actually, I didn't come up with the name for the podcast. My my buddy Dawson, who I'm hopefully going to have on the podcast at one point, um, he gave me the idea for the name because I was like, dude, I'm horrible at coming up with names for things, and I need your help. And so he's like well, you know, throwing me names. Justice's podcast, which is so good. Yeah. The J Pod. It was originally called Department everyone of Justice. Go, everyone go watch the J Pod. Yeah. It's it's great. He originally called it Department of Justice. Then he was like really worried it was gonna make him sound like a cop or something. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he changed it. But uh, I think it's like uh meant to be like the Douglas Copeland book, J Pod. Mm. Yeah. But it you know his name's Justice. J. Yeah. It's a podcast. There you it go. It works. Yeah. It's beautiful. You got any more questions for me? I got? do. I do. Um, these are, I have like other just like talking points. It's nothing too definitive. Um, but I did want to talk to you about uh, records mm-hmm. and just how you were, you know, introduced into like the scene of just like making records and also working at Neptune. And, you know, it's a very like multifaceted uh, topic. But I want to start off with, um, uh, the process of like working with bands to get records made. So how did you get into that? And do you like it? And <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a difficult thing to do these days. Mm-hmm. Um, we're looking at like a worldwide shortage of pressing plants right now. Yeah. Uh, Which is, I feel like, is can you explain a little bit about that? Because it, it seems a little bit confusing with well, like it, the it, amount of records that are getting made right now. In the pandemic, every single artist like made an album mm. and now they're all getting pressed at the same time mm. as people are getting ready to go on tour and stuff oh wow yeah so a lot of artists have been at work in the studio during the pandemic yeah now every artist is coming out with records at the same time we're yeah. also looking at the 30 year anniversary of nirvana's Nevermind, oh, uh, true. red hot chili peppers yeah uh, blood sugar there's like tons of of big records coming out right now the billy eilish record clogged up pressing plants for a long time the taylor swift records like it takes like two minutes to press a record Mm -hmm. so like if you're pressing a million copies of something it's a lot a long time yeah so that makes a lot of pressing plants only have one press or two presses right yeah so um even a plant like a really big plant would would maybe only have like 12 or 15 Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and that it takes like a lot of people Stuff goes wrong all the time. So whenever yeah. something goes wrong, the press is down for like a day. Yeah. You know? Also, either, they're, from what I do know about um, making vinyls and, and records and stuff like that, they also can be a little finicky with like the, the what are those, the template? Um, yeah, the stampers. The stampers. Yeah, 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 they can be a little finicky sometimes. Mm-hmm. And also like, it's just, there's so many things that can go wrong when you're making a record too, comparatively to like making a CD. You know, yeah, CDs, CD, you the just, CD's already made. You just burn like, it onto it's, the disc. Yeah, it, yeah. It is, you just, you know, put it into something and just burn it a billion times. And, okay, now we have a bunch of CDs with, like, vinyl. You're creating each single one. Yeah. And, it, again, Record, takes two minutes. That seems, that seems a like a lot. Yeah, it yeah. seems like, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but, mm-hmm. like, if you're making millions of them, yeah. you know, that's, like, you need a lot of... Uh, that's why most pressing plants, like, in Europe now, pressing plants are backed up, like, about... 13 months or something wow yeah wow even in north america most places are looking at eight months at least yeah um this might all sound comical even by the time this podcast comes out you never Mm. know you know what i mean like um even a a couple months ago we were looking at uh three months you know because everything hits all at the same time yeah um i got into pressing records because i collected records i was really into the idea of running a record label. Mm-hmm. Um, I lived in Nanaimo for like a, a brief period where I did a radio show on CHLY in Nanaimo. Oh, wow. And um, and I was always playing like new music. This yeah. is at the time when like um, blogs were really big, like music blogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so you would, stuff would break on the blogs and 
big website would never have heard of it yet. Yeah. And places like Pitchfork or um, Stereo Gum would like be tripping over themselves to like get on the new blog. Yeah. Blog and I know like the guys that were like actually in the shit actually like yeah, they, knew what was happening. So I would cool. like, I played tons of bands on my radio show um, before they were big because mm-hmm. they were popping in like the blog world. Totally. Right? And I can't. So, like how would you like, how would you get your hands on a record if it was like a really low key band? Well, stuff would trend on like Hype Machine was like a website back in the day that mm. um, like you could have like, People would, like, vote stuff up or whatever. Is so, it, like, a forum kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, it was sort of like a forum. It was essentially like a um, like a website that tracked how many um, blogs were posting, like, the same songs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So if, like, a, a song was being posted a lot of times on, like, a lot of blogs, it would go, like, up to the top. Yeah. So I would check that for, like, stuff that was trending. I would also, like, follow different blogs that would post new music so i heard like you know the vampire weekend like yeah. the blue cd is like their first like demo that was like it oh broke, wow broke and them. it was on this uh, yeah it was like on some website that, yeah that i followed and i played that and like you know i remember playing like um like a lot of uh new rappers and stuff at mm-hmm. the time who mm-hmm. um, have gone on to be way bigger yeah because they were just like coming up on on blogs mm-hmm. and uh and I remember thinking, God, I should start a record label. Like, everything that I play gets super famous. Blows up, so yeah. I, I must have, like, an okay ear for yeah, it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, not that I really, like, do it to try to get, like, hit records or whatever. Yeah. Like, obviously, if that was my goal. But you recognized some sort of trend. Yeah, You know, yeah. like, you recognize some sort of pattern where you're like, I keep finding these people on this on this website, and they keep blowing up, and, like, I usually know that they have some sort of potential. Yeah, like, I guess... They... Um, at, at that point, I was just, like, the guy with weird music taste, and all my friends yeah. thought I had, like, bad taste or different taste or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that was the first time where I was like, look, lots of people like the same stuff as me, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I um, I basically, like, wanted to share my taste with the world or with my, my friends, at least, you know? Yeah, totally. So, yeah, I originally came up with the idea of starting a record label, Um because I was already putting on shows. I had done the Christmas show, and I had always been like, yeah, Kingfisher Blues. Like, mm-hmm. I put put on shows as Kingfisher Blues for a little bit. Totally. Um, and I, I had been playing in a band. My band broke up, and I just didn't really have anything to do, but I mm-hmm. was still really wanted to be part of, like, um, I came from a small town, and there wasn't really, like, a DIY scene there. Yeah. There was, like, no alternative to DIY, you know? Yeah. Like, you, everything was DIY because there was nothing Because there was no do. actual, yeah. like, There's professional no There's no infrastructure for, like, yeah. yeah, doing, like, a, you know, promoter or, or promotion for a show or totally. whatever. Like, it was, like, if you want to no, like, big show, bands were coming through or anything? Nah, like, we would, like... Where was this that you grew up? I grew up in Roberts Creek, BC. Roberts Creek, oh, yeah. wow. On, Where on the Sunshine actually, Coast. On the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, like, Gibson's. Area. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it would be like, oh, we want to see a band play. So we would email them or write to them on MySpace and be like, hey, will you come out to Gibson's? And these bands were, like, so happy to be asked to, like, go, go to play anywhere. somewhere. Yeah. That they'd be like, yeah, sure, you know? Yeah. And they would come out and play in Gibson's for, like, 200 bucks. And then yeah. spend, like, you know, 150 bucks on the ferry or whatever. Totally. You know? It was like, they do it just for fun. But we would make sure, like, you know, 50 kids or 80 kids come out to the show. Yeah. It was, like, a, like a, a big deal to have that many people come out. It's basically totally. everyone in your grade. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, totally. it's like, it's like you, hey, we got, like, a bunch of people to come out to the show. And we, like, b- brought these bands out so that we could, like, open for them or whatever. You also, know? also, for the bands that were going out to um, Roberts Creek, then, mm-hmm. like, just being able to play in front of, like, a completely different group of people than, like, yeah. what they're used to. Because, like... Um, like I love like the the regulars that come to our shows and stuff like that. But like, if the same kind of thing were to happen, like if someone were to, um, you know, message us or something and be like, "Hey, we have this little place in in, you know, Roberts Creek or mm-hmm. Gibson's, or whatever," and we like want to put on a show where you play, I'd be like, of "Yeah, course. it's worth going out there for the five it's kids just, that want you to play." Yeah, you know? and the island's so beautiful. Like, yeah, it's actually I, not an island, but it's uh, but it, yeah, it's on the mainland. Just a. To clarify, Roberts Creek. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not on Vancouver Island. No. Oh, well, I, th- I thought it was on like uh, like near Gibson's and stuff. Yeah, 
Is that not? No. Oh. You can walk there if you want. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So just let, letting people know, it is a peninsula. <laughs> it's not an island. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's cool. why it's called the Sunshine Coast, because it's on the coast of, ah, of Canada. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Um, But, yeah, you do have to take a ferry to get there. Mm. Or you could walk. You can't drive there, though. Mm. Is there, like, there's, like, trails? There's, like, trails, yeah. Mm. Um, if you went up by, like, Squamish, you could, like, walk down. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. But, um, but anyway, so I grew up in this small town. We put on our own shows and stuff. And I've always just, like, you know, done everything myself. Mm. And I, I was, like, in this period where I didn't really, like, have a band, didn't really have anything to do, but I was still writing music. And yeah. I, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll, like, start a record label. Totally. That's always something I wanted to do. I've always been, yeah. like, the only organized person in the bands I was in. I've always been the guy who was, like, writing to promoters, asking if we could play a show or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's always one person in every band who is, like, the guy who hand- organizes handles, like, things the, and yeah, the yeah. business aspect of it. Totally. And even though I was super, super inept at it, I was the guy in my band that did that. Yeah. And so I thought, you know what? Maybe I could, like, start a record label and I could, like, help promote my friend's music, you know? Yeah. Because I thought my friends were so good. I wish I could, like, I wish that I could hear their music, like, on records or whatever. Totally. So I thought, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so I started Kingfisher Blues originally, like, as, like, a MP3 music blog. And I would, like, review music, mm. and then I would, like, post new music as well. Yeah. But then, like, blogs, like, died out really quickly. Um, all of a sudden, I don't know what the fuck happened, but yeah, I think like, it was, like, the rise of social media. Totally. Like, every person became their own blog, I you feel know? like, yeah. Well, like, you would post something on your Facebook and be like, I like this song. And then yeah. people would share it or whatever. Right? Yeah. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Basically every like Twitter, individual Facebook. became their own blog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like it's all. Yeah. Also like not even just the rise of, of like social media on like an individual level, but also just like companies moving into the social media like landscape with um, like using it basically as like their website instead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of like, here's a link and you can go follow this and, and you can, you know, keep up to date on, on everything through our website. Like people just say, go to my Instagram. Like, yeah, I don't there. even like, I don't print web addresses on my records or anything. Yeah. I think it's silly. I think like websites in a couple of years will look the same way. Like MySpace profiles look on the back of a record I, I, from 2009, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just like no one uses it and people yeah. know where to find you. If someone really wants to hear more about your band, mm-hmm. they're not going to be like, Oh, I really want to know more about Cam Blake, but like I don't know where to find him. I don't know him. where to like find him. You can him. just Google my name and it'll yeah, show up yeah. anywhere. I actually don't even remember if I put my website on my my record or not. But like I think websites there there is like an there is like there is a there is a function for them. You know what I mean? Like um, like they're a good place to like buy merch and um, you can like kind of keep up to date with like their their tour schedule and stuff like that. But like. I mean, it, most of the time, like, if you do know somebody's coming through your town, you'd, you'd know anyway through, like, mm-hmm. you know, if you follow them on Instagram or you have, like, Ticketmaster notifications or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it is. It, they, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. They, people just don't even use people websites. People don't use them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. I, so, I started the label, like, after. I, I did think I did my first record, like, 2011, mm. I think. So, I've been running the... Christmas show since 2000 late I always say 2008 it was actually like late 2007 okay because it was Christmas yeah so like <clears throat> I'd already done the the Christmas show a few times and I had put out like I think the first Christmas record I did was like can't be nine so I'd done a handful of records um sort of in 2000 10 or 2011 I think Mm -hmm. I did the first one yeah so I've been doing it for 10 years now and that's amazing yeah we put out like maybe like 175 records maybe more yeah is that including like the the singles yeah that's including singles yeah yeah LPs I think I've I'm up to 66 LPs now yeah yeah maybe maybe more I'm up to 69 I think is that including like records that um 
Like, is that through just, just Kingfisher Blues or records that, like, you've been a part That's of? That's just stuff? Kingfisher Blues, including mm. stuff that I've helped release that I don't have, like, my name on. Yeah. There's, like, probably um, another 50 or 60 yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's really cool. Because, like, I don't even know what other way people would make records instead of, like, uh, unless, unless they're, like, ordering them offline or something like that. But, like, I don't really know any other way that people would make records in Vancouver, at least. Yeah, you know, I try to make were... it like I try to make it like accessible to people. So, you know, when people come to me with a record, yeah. sometimes I don't want to do it or whatever and or they don't might not want it to be on my label, mm -hmm. but I'll be like, "Hey, but I can help you press it." So, yeah. and that's been really helpful for I think a lot of people yeah. to have someone else who has done it a few times totally. sort of be able to handle the and the pressing process. Totally. And also just to know like just like the ins and outs of like you know everything you need to submit and like the type of quality you need and like mm -hmm. so I I know that I didn't know that you needed like actual specific masters for vinyl records. Yeah, and I mean you don't need specific masters for it, but it's yeah, better. But to it have does help. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've submitted plenty of records using just with the regular digital masters. masters. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it's just like vinyl masters. You know, you're gonna get something specifically tailored for yeah. the fidelity of like a vinyl record. Totally. Um, yeah, for, I mean, like, if anyone's listening to this who wants to make a record and you're in Vancouver, like, I'm I'm here to help. And I Timothy think... Timothy Clapp is the man. Yeah, I'm I'm the guy for, <laughs> for vinyl records. Like, please reach out to me. Yeah. I might not want to put it on my label, but I would be happy to help you get those records made. Mm -hmm. He is the man. True. As as the as the said. He as I said earlier, yeah. As as he said in his, his own introduction. <laughs> in my own introduction. <laughs> that I made him do. <laughs> Um, that's amazing. Wow. I, I, what's the heck? Is that that? <laughs> I was hoping that would go up. Yeah. It like, uh, I'm not going to take it off the wall cause I don't want to have to put it back on. Is but, my uh, watch running behind? Oh no. It's four minutes early. What, what time are we? We're, we're good. 7.56 right now. Oh yeah. We're making good time. Yeah. Um, so that thing goes off on the 56 every every hour <laughs> i guess so i uh yeah i think i did it's i just, i guess i said it four, wrong four minutes uh, uh ahead yeah jeez well don't Look set it me. back now it will go again in four minutes perfect okay yeah, yeah yeah we'll just we'll just uh have to roll with the punches on that one um but yeah okay so tim the mute i wanted to ask about yeah. um so again kind of can i get an origin story of uh, of when you started writing music um, you know, what inspired you to make your own solo project, that kind of thing? Yeah, I've always been like, um, when I was like a little weird kid in, in school, I was mm. always a guy who was creative and always into like writing. I always wanted to be like a writer. I yeah. wanted to, you know, it was one of the first things where people said to me, oh, hey, like you're good at that or whatever. You yeah. Know? And <laughs> when you're like a, a little weird kid, that's the first thing you cling to. It could have been anything. I could have been like, you know, like if someone told me I was good at something, I could be doing like fucking equestrian show jumping right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was the first thing where someone said, "Hey, you're good," and I was like, "This is my thing now." Yeah. Like it was, it was like creative writing, I guess. And I remember when I was like thirteen, there was a kid at my school who was like a bully. He was like a big bully, like a classic sort of. Like, like give me your lunch money, bully, kind yeah. of, yeah. And he like would turn you upside down and <laughs> shake the quarters out of you and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what this guy was like. And I remember him like, you know, tearing up my books or like, you know, he was like a mean guy. Was he like a was he like a, a bigger bully? Yeah, he's a big guy. Was he? Yeah. And then did he have like a smaller sidekick guy that would <laughs> you like? You know, I don't think he did. I think he no. was open to having a sidekick, but he he did alienate people. His name was Dalton. Dalton. Yeah, yeah. That's just a bully name. Yeah, yeah. No offense to Dalton's out there, but a little bit of offense. It is a bully name. Yeah. Yeah. So Dalton, um, he, like, came up to me one day and said, hey, like, you're good at writing. And I was like, oh, thank you. Thank oh, wow. You. Thank you, Dalton. And That's he a said, plot twist. Yeah, he said, I'm starting a band. Would you write some songs for my <laughs> band? What? Yeah. <laughs> the bully. So, yeah, the bully. So oh, he was, shoot. He, I mean, this was 19... Uh, ninety nine or two thousand, I think. And I was he, that was the year I was born. Everybody. Oh wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> so you were what? Uh, I would have been like thirteen or something. Yeah, thirteen. Twelve. 
So wow. 13, yeah, and I he, was a little, I was a little egg. Yeah. Damn. And um, so he said to me like, "Hey, I'm starting a pop punk band, and like, would you want to write the lyrics or whatever?" Mm-hmm. So I wrote him like, terrified for my life. I wrote him like two or three songs. Yeah. You know, when you're like 13, what do you write about? Like, you wanna. You want to meet up with girls and you want to like party and stuff. Yeah. You don't know anything about. No. I wrote like some like generic pop punk lyrics for him. That and I I wrote a I wrote a, a rap EP nice. when I was when I was uh, fifteen. Let's hope that that doesn't get leaked or anything. Oh, you know, it, I pray to God it doesn't. Um, I have deleted it off of all <laughs> all internet, <laughs> but I know some people still do have CD copies because oh, no. I made CDs for it. Wow! And like handed them out at school and stuff well, like maybe that. Maybe we'll Sorry do to, the vinyl reissue in like ten years. We will never do that. <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, but yeah, I had a similar situation. My yeah. my lyrics were god awful. Like one of the worst things you could like i can't even listen to it i'm just like cringing well, so th- hard. yeah that's exactly what i did yeah. so i wrote this guy some songs and he was like pretty impressed with them yeah and i sort of thought to myself i am a songwriter now <laughs> <laughs> so i beautiful so that was that like, was the, that was that's such a great origin story yeah, yeah you're getting bullied by this guy and then he's like i got bullied into writing hey. generic <laughs> pop punk lyrics um, yeah, so I I basically ripped off like Blink One Eighty Two songs. Like, Beautiful. You know, all the songs at the time were like American Pie was like the biggest movie. Like you know, yeah. Uh, all the songs were like yeah, like we gotta go out, get drunk, we're try partying. to find girls, party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a really like a very different era. To it would up freak in. me out to hear like you write a song about like part <laughs> like that kind of thing. Like oh, we're partying and drinking yeah. and stuff. I don't party. All my songs are are more about my life now mm-hmm. um but i yeah so i w- from that point on was like oh i guess i'm like a songwriter so yeah I, yeah i bought a guitar with like my allowance or whatever and and um still the guitar i play today beautiful um a mexican fender telecaster oh. um in royal blue it's beautiful i still mm. i just only recently peeled the stickers off it from when i was like 13 i put like spiders and stuff on it. <laughs> lovely yeah, yeah i um i remember i was at a little a, sacrilegious I'm yeah. not gonna lie i went to, uh, i went to a friend's place his dad was like oh i've got an amp yeah over there if you want it for 50 bucks or oh, whatever easy. yeah i bought a roland jc120 nice still the amp i play today Beautiful. so i'm still at and i haven't learned any more guitar than i learned when i was 13 so i have like, i have noticed a little bit of uh a little bit of repetition in, yeah, in uh, guitar progressions i basically just played g and this like c add nine mm. it was like that that yeah you know that was my first song that i ever written it was called uh, just go uh, and that it was it was those chords. Do you it want? Was... Should we play it now or? No. Okay. It's really bad. Again. <laughs> I was like looking around for a guitar. I here. was like, please no. <laughs> I got a whole ass drum kit right yeah. here, but um, yeah. For the uh, for the listeners and watchers, there is a. I have my whole drum kit over here. I didn't feel like. I didn't really want to disassemble it. I feel like it. It still works in the space. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I can. No, it looks good. Yeah. Another day at the office. Exactly. This um, is my office. This is the office. Yeah. Welcome to welcome to desk jockeys. Mm. Welcome to the office. Mm-hmm. This is the office television yeah, yeah. show. Welcome to S- Michael Scott. My- the office. <laughs> I am Michael Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and I'm Evil Jim. <laughs> you're not Dwight. No, that's Evil Jim's the only Asian guy in the office. Evil. Evil. Oh, when uh, like when he like sits in and like is like his impersonator or whatever. Evil you know Jim. I can't. Yeah, it's uh, what's his name? The guy in the, uh, there's the guy in the uh, uh, who works at the in like the garage downstairs. He's Asian. So we, well, I'm not getting Google it. I think it's <laughs> Randall Park. Uh, is his name Jim? There's an evil Jim in the office. Evil Jim. Let's not dwell on it. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People it's, will either know it or they won't. Know I, it. It's I, definitely I, real. Okay, I'm gonna take your word for it. Yeah. I'm gonna take. I feel like. I feel like you. The one rule of po- this is another podcast tip: mm-hmm. never Google something in the pod li- live on air. Or unless you have a guy to Google. It yeah, for unless you. there's a guy. Does, I kind of want to get Joe it. Rogan have a guy. He has a guy. There you I go. I kind of want to get a guy. Get, you gotta get Jack or something sitting <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. I know. I just don't want to make the. I don't want to make him commute. I have to get a. I have to get a make Maple Ridge. You made me commute out here. I did. This is the. I've never been so bored as when I was driving out here. I can't believe <laughs> I was really regretting it. I was going, why the fuck did I say I'd come out here? Dude, I love this watch. You this look is, good. This is great. You look good. I really like it. It's really nice. It's 
So the end of my Tim the Mute origin story <laughs> is that I... Um, I, I kind of forgot we were talking about this, but... Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I wrote songs and played in a band for like 10 years, and we mm. broke up, and I was, I was Tim, Tim the Mute in that band because when I was a kid, I was like basically like nonverbal or... Uh, in public, um, I could, I basically like had no, I f- would freeze up in social situations. My anxiety like very introverted. was so high. Yeah. I was really, really introverted and I was, uh, I was a secret extrovert, you know, mm. I was dying to come out of my shell Yeah, and I, but uh, people would talk to me and I like honestly could, did not think people could see me. Mm. And, like that's how weird I was. I was, I had no idea how weird I was until, um, m- basically all of my like, like, the concept of like what other people's heads were like came yeah. from reading. So I like I read a lot more and I realized that like my thoughts were different from other people's thoughts and my behavior was different from other yeah. people's behavior. Yeah. Before that I didn't really have any frame of reference for it. So Well how yeah, how can you? How yeah. can you? Yeah. Like when I was a little kid, I just sort of thought like I didn't really have any like self awareness. I didn't really like no, uh, now that I'm older and I'm like sort of been diagnosed with ADHD, mm-hmm. I can like see how like different behaviors represented like uh, <laughs> like different problems I had at the time. Yeah, but, and how that has affected you like yeah. through growing up and feeling like that too. But as a kid, yeah, I was really weird and and I was like like had a big problem talking and yeah. um, I would freeze up and I. Did, couldn't talk in front of people really. Mm-hmm. I was okay at home, but at school and stuff, I had a really tough time. And then, like, yeah, I I wanted to like get away from that. So when I was like thirteen, fourteen, I was like coming up with the idea of like who I was gonna be. Mm-hmm. I would look into the mirror, and I like I'd never seen another Asian person before really and mm. I'm, I'm half Asian I'm half Chinese half white mm. but like I was the most Asian person like in Gibson's like people called me like the n-word at school wow like you know I was like as dark as it got where I came from and I had never I had no reference for like what an Asian person would do except for martial arts people mm. like would yell like Jackie Chan Bruce mm. Lee Jet Li was really popular at the time. Not as popular now, but, like, people would yell Jet Li at me. Mm-hmm. And, like, I didn't... I was, like, so should I, like... But I, like, took karate and stuff. Like, I had oh, no... Wow. I, yeah, like, I was, like, the only thing I could think of for me to be was, like, a martial artist. I couldn't just... There was no, like, Google when I was a kid, so I couldn't just Google Asian people or whatever. The only Asian people I'd ever see was, like, people I saw on TV, which was, like, literally just... Jackie Chan or whatever, like you know, Fu and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'd look at myself yeah. in the mirror when I was a kid and be like, "Who will I be? Who am I? Mm. Like, I want to be like a like a punk musician, you yeah. know? But like, what does that mean? Are there any Asian punks? Like, I didn't know, you know. And there's no one there to like teach you about any of this kind of stuff no, either. I, you because know, I grew up, I, I was the punk. Like, I was the yeah. guy who told other people about like what I I was the guy who knew everything about music so I was like hey like you should listen to Rancid or whatever you know I was like the guy was really into music yeah so I didn't have like anyone who was like older to tell me like hey like you know uh there's tons of Asian punk bands or whatever or there's you know there's not tons Mm -hmm. but um I didn't have like role models for that so I think for for me I sort of thought to myself okay I'm gonna be like the version of myself I want to be. And mm. I sort of like s- sat down and created the idea of, of like Tim the Mute or like who I would be, who I wanted to, to be in the world. Yeah. And that was like a much more extroverted person. You yeah. Know? I wanted to like reach out to people and say, like, if you're weird or if you're like me, you're not alone, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause I wanted that so badly when mm-hmm. I was a kid, I just wanted people to be like, like, Tim, like you're, I used to have like fantasies all the time of like, like uh, an older, like this was at the time when like uh, Williamsburg was popping, like 2003, 2004, um, like the National, the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, the Strokes, like mm-hmm. all these bands were like coming out of New York. And I like used yeah. to dream of like moving to New York and like maybe like some really hip 
like couple like taking me in and being like our small friend Tim who's only 15 is our best friend and we're gonna take him to all these shows you Mm -hmm. know and like that's what I wanted so bad so I think like what I what I wanted to become was like the person who could be that to other people you know what Mm -hmm. I mean I wanted to be like um someone who could reach out to younger people and say like hey you can like be in a band and you can play music and you can make records and you don't need other people's permission and you don't need to like look like other people Mm -hmm. you you can just do whatever you want and the way you do it if you can be genuine if you can be truly you and who you are no one else can make that you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like if you can really really be yourself no one else can do the same thing as you yeah and like I think with my music with Tim the Mute like a lot of that stuff could only be written by me and could only be performed by me. And, you know, there's something to be said for, like, uh, stuff that has, like, a universal appeal, mm-hmm. you know, but... It's what, it's so unique. It's so yeah. you. It Like, whenever people, like, listen to, uh, you know, a record or, like, see you play live, it's very you. Mm-hmm. Tim the Mute is, like, that is what... Like, when I think of you, I think of, you know, you up there just rip it <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. just going in and like the thing that's so beautiful about like your writing styles too is like the music you know some of them are, are a little bit more like simple some of them are a little bit more complex but the the lyrics are like so i feel like are probably the most important one of the most important things to you and they express mm-hmm. like all of these very like deep emotions that you have that i'm sure that you know come from those terrible or like unfortunate things that you had to go through when you were growing up and like yeah, people like, treating you, you know, terribly and my trauma level is like so low compared to some people mm-hmm. but like you got to remember like no one escapes childhood without coming no. out like with trauma or totally. being like fucked up in some way and totally. for me my thing my like small little thing mm-hmm. was that I was different and I didn't have representation for that mm-hmm. and that I just wanted someone to be like hey it's okay yeah. so like I've essentially like dedicated my life like in you know living my life in service to my 15 year old self if that doesn't sound sad then I hope it sounds good you know no that's that's beautiful like I I, don't think that's sad at all thank you yeah like I mean I try to write confessional songs I try to write music that sounds conversational that like the way that I phrase stuff Mm -hmm. hopefully people will make it like hope it sounds unwritten like it sounds like someone just talking you know yeah and um yeah, so when I sat down at, like, you know, age 14 or whatever to to be, like, okay, this is who I'm going to be, I decided at that, you know, at that point when I was, like, 13 or 14, like, oh, I'm not going to eat meat. I'm mm-hmm. not really going to drink. I'm not going to take drugs. I'm, like, going to be this sort you of... You haven't eaten meat since, like, you were, like, 14? Yeah. 15? Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's like amazing. 20, 20 years. Good for you. And I've been, I've been vegan for 10 years now. Wow. But wow. Like <clears throat> this, like if you rather need water too. I, I oh, have a little water bottle there. This like slightly sociopathic like shaping of the self mm-hmm. was a big moment for me. You know, mm-hmm. I like really, really wanted to be different from how I was. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be more myself, mm-hmm. and it was through sheer force of will mm-hmm. that I was able to come out the other side as essentially a normal person. You yeah, know? like yeah. I am like. I mean, I'm basically a guy, like I'm a taxpayer, sort of, and I like (laughs) drive a car, you know, I'm like basically a normal person who lives his life uh, unaffected by like the, like the, whatever the feelings and thoughts in my head that, you know, previously Uh, would have. A functioning member of society. Yeah, I'm I'm essentially a functioning member of society. I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but I'm like, I'm more or less a person that you could walk past on the street and be like, that's like another person. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> so like, that's how Tim, the, Tim, the mute came to be. That's I, that, I to... find that sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but, go ahead. Um, I find that like interesting just because like, I've only known you for what, like maybe two years or so. Yeah. Maybe something like that. Those were the best two years though. Yeah. And, and the Tim that I know, um, like I know that you, uh, you know, that you, you deal with shit as everybody does, but, um, you know, obviously it affects two people differently, but, um, the Tim that I know is very, like, uh, very, like, eccentric, very, like, open, very, like, um, like, one of the things that I noticed when I first met you was that 
um, you're very good at just like speaking your mind about things. You know, mm-hmm. that, that was something that I really like, I, I thought was very um, honorable and very like cool. Something that you did was just, you were able to like, if you had a thought about something, you'd openly be able to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And like, it didn't really matter. Like you just say it, you know what I mean? I thought, I think I love when I meet people like that. Yeah. And like, that was why I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. Well, because, I, you know, I've picked up a lot of stuff along the way. I yeah. think, you know, I got that from probably someone else that I met who. And you were like, that's just I was a like, cool I trait. Like yeah, I'm yeah. going to start doing that. So yeah. like, I mean, there's so much I've learned about myself. Like even, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 34 now. Yeah. When I was like 27, I went through a really bad breakup and I sort of came out the other side being like, you know, I need to like. Like, I thought, you know, when you're 27, you think you fucking know everything about yourself, but you just are barely beginning. You know what I mean? I mean, some people start earlier, some people start later, Mm -hmm. but like on that process of self-discovery and of like gaining self-knowledge, I, at 27, I was saying to myself, self-knowledge is power. Like the more I know about myself, the better. Mm -hmm. And I thought I knew everything. And then to be confronted with a situation where my brain just didn't know what to do. And I went back to, like, those old feelings of, like, wanting to, to retreat into my head, wanting to, like, read hundreds and hundreds of books instead of, like, talking to people. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I had to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to come out of this as, like, a normal person again. I just want to, like, to know more about myself. I just want to figure out what is it that makes me tick. Yeah. And I, you know, I went through another journey of Mm self-discovery and crawled my way out of like a place where I was essentially like, um, not, not in a good place or whatever. I don't know if you have like, um, trigger warnings on your podcast about suicidal thoughts or whatever. Yeah. You know, maybe chuck something in there, but yeah, I was in like, not a very good place. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, um, I didn't really have like a reason to live at that point. And Mm. I was like thinking, I thought I fucking knew everything and life still surprised me. Mm. And now I see how stupid that is, you know, at, at my age now. And like at the point I'm at in my life now, I think, you know what? I am like ready for life to keep surprising me. I'm ready for like, um, really difficult things to come up. Mm -hmm. And I, I like, I couldn't be more happy to like, to know that, I lived through all the stuff I've lived through, you know, and came out the other side probably as a better person. And the Mm -hmm. more that I've learned from other people, the more I grow, the happier I am. Totally. You know? Totally. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was amazing. Well, you know. That was beautiful. That was really, wow. Um, Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the craziest things just about, um, cause like, obviously I'm very, I'm very young. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I'm the, the time between 21 and 34, like even the time between 18 and now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? For me has been like a complete 360. Like I'm not the same person whatsoever. So I can only imagine what between 21 and 34 is. Well, you know, what you I mean? know you're like, welcome anytime in that time to come talk to me. Yeah. You know, when you, when you have trouble and when mm-hmm. you're struggling with stuff, please like, you know, I hope you know that you can reach out to me and I'll yeah. always be there no matter what, you know, I'm, uh, I've been that person to, to many people and I've had many people be that person to me. And, you know, I want you to know that mm-hmm. you can always reach out and talk to me and, um, you know, it, the best thing you can do for yourself or whatever is to mm-hmm. just be willing to be wrong. You know what I mean? Totally. I think for me, that was like a difficult one where I had to think to myself, yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not as smart as I wish I was. I want to like mm-hmm. know more. I want to know more about myself. Totally. And I, and I'm totally willing for someone to tell me, like when people tell me what they don't like about me, then if I respect that person and I want them to like me, mm-hmm. I will be willing to change, mm. you know? Yeah. That's, that's an interesting, mm. that's an interesting take on it too, because um, do you feel like, do you feel like you'll always change when people that you respect say something, you know, somewhat constructive, but are trying to make you change something I think about like, yourself? Or is it just like if you recognize that it's a problem and you feel like you should change it, then you will? Or I, is it I mean, I'm sort of the type of person where I might not realize if I'm doing something this bad, you know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I had one person tell me it like years ago that 
um, that I like wasn't listening to them, and I just like, um, I just hate the idea of like a guy who just like holds court and like pontificates to himself, yeah, and, like doesn't listen to the other person, yeah. And I was like, oh my god, am I doing that? Like, I trust this person. Mm-hmm. That was someone who I was like, that that person never would have said that if they didn't mean it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to like think about that. And I had to like sit with that and be like, how can I like be a better listener? Yeah. How can I like, you know, cause I definitely remember times where someone would be talking and I'd be like waiting for them to stop talking so I could say something else. Yeah. And I'd be like, that's not, that can't be a good trait. That can't be how conversations yeah, yeah. work. So no. I was like, I'm going to get better at like listening to people. Yeah. And um, just making a mental note of it too. Then yeah. anytime that you feel like you weren't listening, then you can be like, okay, I need to put myself back on track and start I think, focusing on I this. think a lot of that as well was like my anxiety where I was, I was thinking like constantly like worried about not knowing what to say. Yeah. Whereas like now I'm a lot more confident in my body and, yeah. and in my mind and I'm like I have stuff to say about pretty much <laughs> everything. So like if someone asks me a question, I can answer it without while they're talking, thinking, uh, it feels natural. Yeah. Like having a conversation. I, cause I've definitely had that kind of feeling where when you're talking to somebody and you're trying to have a genuine conversation, but instead you're just in your head, like thinking about like, Oh, how do I, how do I reply to that? Like yeah. thinking about where they're going to go with what they're saying and coming up with like, 10 different you know theoretical like you know what I mean like coming up with like a bunch of things that you will just like spout out to make yourself look a certain way or to do that you know I think that's that's like a I feel like insecurity is kind of built into so many different um like parts of like the inner workings of like how your mind works and just how like you are in tune with everything Mm -hmm. um like insecurity I mean at least for me personally I know it, it plays such a um, you know, important, but like also annoying role in everything that I do, just because, um, you know, people that have that like internal dialogue, that's just like constantly going, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to feel like you can fully be yourself when you have like something telling you to be or look or, you know, do things a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like that definitely plays a part into just how you like listen to people and how you can have conversations because, if you're not fully comfortable, like, with, you know, what you're going to say or any of those kinds of things, if you don't have confidence within that, um, then it's basically impossible to have, like, a fully genuine conversation because you're mostly just worried about how you're going to present yourself, you know, instead Mm -hmm. of just having, you know, an actual moment with somebody and and talking to them. Definitely. I agree with that. I think think for me, um, I remember earlier in my life, I... I read like quite a lot of books and I yeah. think I always found that if someone didn't read books or if someone like wasn't interested in like, m- like music, movies, like literature, I would fucking tune out. Cause I'd be like, Oh, this person like is dumb or whatever, you <laughs> yeah. know? And like, now I try to like, if I'm talking to someone and I, you know, like any adult, sometimes I'm in com- conversations with people who I don't really know that well and I might not meet otherwise. So like, mm-hmm. Now I try to think, what can this person, like, teach me, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the smartest person in a room. I want to be, like, the dumbest person in the room. Totally. I want people to, like, to teach me stuff. So I try to, like, meet people on their level and try to get them to, like, tell me about what they like. And, yeah. Like, it, you know, if I'm talking to someone who's, like, a mechanic, mm-hmm. I've got plenty of questions about, like, cars or, like, totally. what to do. Like, you know, I don't know. How, like, okay, so, like, I've never, if I was, okay, if you were a mechanic, I would be, like, Hey Cam, I every time my car makes a clicking noise, I pour oil in. Is that okay? Yeah. Like, will I put too much oil in at some point? Yeah. I don't know if any if any of our listeners here are mechanics. I'm, I'm not. I'm like, not a mechanic in any. In I any feel sense like of the I word. get a, I get oil changes like every six months. So um, when What's... I when I get an oil change, no one has said to me, "There's way too much oil in here," <laughs> or like, "What have you been doing?" They, you know, they just they're like, is it is it a is it usually just like a, a pass through and they're like, oh, everything's good to go. Yeah, or yeah. is no, it no one it, ever says to me, what the fuck have you been putting in here? <laughs> or like there's way too much oil, Tim. I've definitely had it where I had one of the per- people that was changing the oil in my car say to me, you know, that you can fill it up with oil like you don't have to come and get it changed to get it filled up. Oh, is that true? So yeah. I, I guess I'm OK then. 
Yeah. Maybe no, I- you can you can fill up your car with oil all the time. I mean, it it, it really just depends on like, what's like the change. They drain out the oil that's in there because it's like dirty, right? Yeah, I actually just did an oil change in my car a couple days ago. You did it yourself? I did it myself. My friend taught me how to do wow. it. It was the See, first time I'd I've, ever done it. I wish I was in a conversation with your friend at a dinner party, he's, and he's, I would be like, "How do I change my own oil?" I'm I can lazy. teach you now. I you might. I me. might be. I mean, I don't know how to do it on a CRV. I don't yeah. know how to do it on. What do you drive again? It's a 2001 Subaru Impreza. Oh, beautiful car. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Car. You know, I actually like... You were whipping it, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I told you to move the, the parking spot, you like just... Oh, yeah. I Tokyo Drift, you for did. sure. You, yeah, yeah. you went really quick. Yeah. I was impressed. I got that car because my friend Nina um, like was away for a week or something, and mm-hmm. I drove her car, and I loved it, and mm-hmm. she had the same car. And I literally, when my van died, yeah. I went straight on Craigslist, and I typed in Subaru, and I bought the first one that came up without looking at That's it. That's beautiful. How yeah. long have you had the, the Subaru? Uh, probably a, a year and a half, nice. a little more. Yeah. How's she, how's she treating you? Oh, I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. If Great I bought car. A, if I bought another car, I'd Great get, a, storage, too. get another Subaru. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's quite a lot of uh, record mailers in the back of my car. <laughs> totally. Um, I actually, I, not, not too similar, but a kind of similar situation with how I got my car was my, my, the guy who helped me change my oil. Um, he had a Honda CRV and we went camping in it. Um, interesting story about this camping trip. I won't tell it right now, but I'll tell it in a, maybe a different episode. Stay tuned. But, <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for another episode where I talk about Revelstoke and all the crazy shenanigans that went down there. But, uh, um, but yeah, he had that car and I just like fell in love with it. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's just like, there's something about a car. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like the clothes you wear. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, there's something about a car that like says something very specific about you. You know, I, the, the, dro- the car that I drove for the first two years that I had my license, mm-hmm. I always felt like it, you know, didn't represent me the right way. Yeah. You know? I drive a shitty car cause I'm a shitty guy. Don't, I yeah, drive yeah. a fucking, you know, 1998 I, Honda CRV. It, it, it it's rickety as fuck. It's got three hundred thousand kilometers on it. You know, it'll probably break down within the next year. But that's 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 the kind of car I am right now. Yeah, know? I mean, I'm wearing a watch that costs twice as much as my car. <laughs> you know, my my car's a piece of shit. <laughs> that watch is super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pretty much everything costs more than my car. Tim's you know? on time. Go follow at him Tim's on Instagram. On time, yeah. yeah, at Reasons to Live Books at Kingfisher yeah. Blues at. Tim's on time. Yeah, we're gonna do that again at the end too, just because I I want everyone yeah. to. You have great content. I really like the That's way true. that I'm I really like your creator. I really like your stories. I really like your posts. You I try know. I try to you know what the the secret is. What's the secret? I I only post positive stuff mm. or stuff that's so negative it's comedic. Mm. Like I posted yesterday that they like put me on the ferry, but they like shoved me in so I saw tight the, that the, I couldn't the car, open my, yeah, the door I wasn't able to open. open. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, like, had to pee so bad, but I was like, I guess I could crawl into my back seat. Could you not get, get out, out the, the, the right side? No. It you was were p- packed, packed in on, on both, both sides. sides. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I That's couldn't... horrible. I couldn't get out, but I I just sat through it. You probably could have, like, maybe climbed through the window. You I, know, rolled yeah. the window down. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, like, climbed up. through it. yeah. I kind of like, there's something, like, were you on, like, a, a middle part of the ferry? I was right, you... I was the last car on. I was right at the back. That's kind of nice. They actually, I they parked me, and then they made me back out, and then, like, three guys, like, like were like, okay, left, 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 what? stop, pivot, right, pivot, straight, and, like. Like, they were really boxing they, like, you in They, like, boxed there. me in so they could put another car right beside me on both sides. What? So yeah, like so that's that, so I mean, weird. That's funny. So I post that. That's but hilarious. I, but I yeah. and I post like funny stuff, but I don't post like negative stuff. Yeah. And I don't post like stuff that like doesn't have anything to do with the record label, mm. you know, or I mean, or with like my life or whatever. Like yeah. you know, the Kingfisher Blues account. I post yeah. stuff to do with like my life, mm-hmm. but I keep like a tight cast on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. I, I that's that's great advice for for people that are trying to you know get their Instagram going. Um. The way that I've always functioned with my uh, Instagram is more just, like, I think there's, like, to me, it's important to be a little bit impulsive about things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just in general, but also with, like, social media. It's just, like, hey, I'm doing this. So I'm just going to take a quick picture and just throw it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think I don't like putting, like, too much energy. Yeah, planning something out sort of makes your account look fake or Exactly. Whatever, right? I don't like, unless I'm doing, like, a post, unless I'm doing, like, a release or something. Yeah. I don't like putting too much thought into it just because, like, it's just social media. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's important in, like, a, you know, like a, in, like, a somewhat, like, the, you know, the business end of things. You know what I mean? Just to, like, 
have people come along with like the thing that you're trying to promote and that kind of stuff yeah. like that. People and, like it is like, fun, but people want a genuine connection to yeah. the person behind it. So yeah. like, if they feel like everything is staged, they don't think they're getting like the real deal or totally. whatever. Totally. Sometimes I'll go to like follow a brand or whatever yeah. that I like and then I look at their account, it's just like, you're like this ads is lame. almost and yeah. I'll be like, yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna follow it. But if I follow totally. an account and they're like, you know, if you follow like um I don't know, like some like a you know Snickers or something, yeah. and they're like fighting, they fighting they with Mars Bar on Twitter or whatever. You're like, oh, that's funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you want to see like people like acting like real people, even if it's like a like a big corporate brand or. The if thing it's... that's scary about that though, sorry mm-hmm. to cut you off, no, go ahead. but um, the thing that's scary about that to me is like I feel like they have so many like executives and they have so many people that are just sitting around like a, a desk, you know, the same way that we are at the Desk Jockey Podcast. Now it's way cooler, but anyway. Um, they have, like, just people that are, like, they get paid thousands of dollars a year, you know, hundreds of yeah. thousands of dollars a year to, like, make it seem like it's genuine. You know what well, I mean? Like, do, the, you, I, do you think the no, Mars no, usually, Bar Snickers thing totally. is, like, actually genuine? Or is it, like, no, no, we have two executives that, like, <laughs> met together and we're, like, we need no, to sell no. more chocolate bars? I think there really is, like, like 23-year-olds at the end of it who are yeah. being paid, like, a modest They're, like, this would be hilarious. Like, yeah, people yeah. would love this. Like, like, people, like, who are yeah. essentially, like, Twitter comedians yeah. get paid to, like, yeah. represent a brand or whatever. I think that's funny because I'd rather interact with something like that than just, like, an ad for, like, a chocolate bar. Because there is, like, thought. There's, like, there's actually, like, interesting, like, a new way of thinking about some sort of advertisement. Yeah. You know? Because, like, I've always loved, like, really, like, cool commercials. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, there's an art to, like, selling someone something. Totally. And I think, like, the, the key to it is to, like, offer a product that is like iconic to the, mm-hmm. the person who wants it or whatever mm-hmm. and like if you put like a hard sell on that like you have to essentially show someone a, a product that they like or whatever and not yeah. like try to force them to buy it or whatever you yeah know what i mean same thing with like promoting your band or whatever mm-hmm. right if you come off like really desperate to get like totally you know you can be like oh pre-save our new song or whatever but like if you only say that, I'm, like, tuned out already. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want people to, like, give, like, a genuine interaction with me, like, as, in this case, like, I'm I'm filling the role of, like, the passive consumer who, like, mm-hmm. has content delivered into his face all day. And, like... Which we almost all are. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, if, if I'm trying to choose, like, what I'm going to listen to or whatever, mm-hmm. it's going to be usually something that comes out of, like... Um, it has to get my attention first mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Yeah, and it has to feel a little bit genuine, like you're interacting with the person and on a certain level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's really fair. The thing I've always... The thing that also ties in with the the impulsivity of my... You know, like the way that I'm just... I'm just going off of what I do, usually. Mm-hmm. Um, I very... I, I'll, I, I don't usually write, like, big paragraph things, but that'll usually come post... Uh, That'll usually come like post um, the like release. Like whenever I release something, I'm like, I'm like, here's the here's the the song. You know what I mean? Go listen to it, and then yeah. like afterwards, I'll be like, this is why it means something to me. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? um, and I feel like that is important because like I know that most artists I see, I don't know. It's also it's it's a bit of a double edged sword though too because like it also it can be perceived sometimes. Um, with people who, like, you know, kind of open up, like, uh, almost in, like, a superficial way about things. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you know, like, people who make, like, really intense TikToks about their songs and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're kind of, like, uh, you know, I don't want to get, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to you don't want to give a sh- I don't want to throw any shade at any artist. You know yeah. what I mean? Just, like, do your thing. Try to. It's a fine line to walk. And, yeah. you know, the, the different techniques to, like, running social media for, like, a band. Yeah. It's as different as there are people you know yeah like, totally stuff will resonate with people and not resonate with other people i think that's the main idea that i'm trying to get across mm-hmm. is that thin line you know to be between like being like you know professional about something and then also being personal about something but also then being like kind of cringe and desperate yeah. and There's weird about cringe it on both levels there you is know what I mean? totally like, if someone totally. is so earnest and like every single one of their their post is about like how meaningful oh, everything like, yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, then you're hey, like, like can oh, you come just, on. Can you just like drop a link? Like, yeah, yeah. Can like, you let's stop? hear the fucking tunes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Drop totally. the, you know, drop the bass. Totally. <laughs> drop the bass. 
And then... Drop the bass. But then, like, if, yeah, someone is, like, comes off totally superficial, then it's also, like, embarrassing. Because you're, like... Like, oh, my God, you guys, like, act, like, so professional, but you have, like, 500 followers. No one yeah. gives a fuck. Yeah. Fuck your stupid band. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it is a very thin line. It's hard to... It's, like, people who treat, like, their band as if it's, like, a tech startup or something. Yeah, That's yeah. embarrassing. Or people who, like, treat their band as if they have, like, tons and tons of followers. Yeah. But really, it's, like... Like literally, like their family members and like yeah. a few friends, like no. They're one like, gives thank a you shit. to all of our their yeah, massive yeah. <laughs> fan base. We love you guys. They have like ten streams on yeah. their song. It's like, I mean, and yeah. On the other yeah. hand, there's like a, uh, yeah. Not to throw any shade at certain bands, but <laughs> are we dropping know, names? No, right no, now? no, definitely not. <laughs> I I can't be seen. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but there's like a there are gonna be clips of this. I'm making a bunch of like little cuts of of the the time of the recording. So there's definitely if there like, are if there are important things. There's one oh, there's one band that really sticks out to me as being like super embarrassing on Don't on say social it. media. Don't I'm you not say it. Don't you dare say it. But anyway, so moving book on club. from that. They suck. Oh yeah, book club. Fuck those guys. Yeah, I they're all lame as hell. I couldn't figure out where their show was because they didn't post anything about it. <laughs> That's Ethan and Jack. Can't believe I they can't... run. The, I don't even have the password for the Instagram anymore. Hey, what's up? I couldn't get guest list for a book club show. That was not us. You know that was. Yeah, us. I know that wasn't us. That was Hammy. Yeah, unfortunately, Hammy, you fucked up, pal. <laughs> I would have made that show. <laughs> uh, I don't have twenty dollars, man. <laughs> this is this is this is something that you know we would we would never. Not put you on a guest list, Tim. I hope you know that. Thanks. I would never. never I would never million... pay to see your band. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't want you to ever pay to see my <laughs> band. It doesn't matter what venue I'm playing at. If you need a guest list, I will get you one as long as I can have like you Same know, with you. a couple people. Yeah. Hell when you yeah. guys play the Gathering of the Juggalos, I want to be front and center. Mm-hmm. The Juggalo cover band that we're starting. You guys definitely should do an <laughs> ICP cover. <laughs> I want to do so many different covers just of, like, weird songs, you know? Like, I love when bands just, like, go into, like, some weird jam that, like, you know, they'll start playing, like, video game music or something. Oh, yeah. Like, I want to I want to play, um, I sent it to my band chat the other day. I want I really want to learn how to play, uh, um, uh, Zelda's Lullaby from Ocarina oh, of Time. Yeah. Are That's you going like, to play it on the, what is that, an ocarina? Probably not. We'll probably just, like, find cool synth sounds that sound similar and then just, like, you know. Is that a real instrument? Them. The Ocarina? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Like, you can buy one? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, my uh, my sibling actually has one. Oh, true. Yeah. It's pretty cool. They're weird to play. It's like it's like playing, like, a recorder, basically. Hey, how are we doing for time here? Um, uh, well, we can look at the, we can look at the clock. Oh, we're running, we're running, uh, we, I don't have any time limit, so whenever, whenever you're feeling like. Well, you, I gotta eat dinner at some point, so. You haven't eaten dinner? Uh, no, I got like it's, it's eight. It's eight thirty. I guess you were driving the whole time, so yeah, you drive all the way out here. But yeah, we can we can wrap it up whenever you want. No worries. I'm completely open to any time. You got any more questions? Um. Uh, that was the. Uh, I don't know why you need two sheets of paper for that. The second sheet just doesn't have anything on it. <laughs> well, don't let them know. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. I feel like these questions might take a little bit long to answer, but that's okay. We can, I'm, I'm, we can, you know, yeah, we can, yeah, we can yeah. just go over them in, in a, in a, you know, respectable way. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk to you about voice memos. So I yeah. heard uh, through Ronnie that yeah. when you record or like when you come up with like lyrics and like when you think of like vocal melodies and stuff, you'll just like be in your car and just like record like massively long like voice memos. Yeah, is that not true for everyone? Is I, I that's what I do, yeah. I, write, I never do that. I write all my songs driving in my car. So I like will go out and drive out to UBC and then drive out to like Coquitlam and I'll mm. just drive around and I like run the voice memo. Yeah. And I sing to do myself. Do you go on these drives to get like inspiration for, for writing? Is that... I've usually got like I'll be thinking of something, I'll go, Oh shit, okay. I I got a line and then yeah. I'll like yeah. jump in the car and start driving and I'll like um, what I usually do is I start with like the first line of a song, mm-hmm. then I like add a line, add a line, mm-hmm. and I keep I start from the beginning every time and sing it, mm-hmm. and then 
every time a line isn't that good. Like, but when I get to the end, I have to make up a new line. Yeah. And then if that line isn't good, I just go back and when I do it again, I like cut it and do something else. Yeah. So I slowly build the song line by line. Yeah. Until I get to the end or whatever. And then by the time it's done, I've memorized it because I've sung it like 400 times. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely not how I write down lyrics. <laughs> that's that's beautiful. That's yeah, great. Yeah, a lot of I, actually, I found out when I was recording my record, I didn't write down lyrics to like any of my songs. You just had them. I just had locked them away yeah, in the yeah. vault. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, also, I uh, we went over we went over mugs, we went over watches. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this Jaden Smith story that you told me about. Oh, um, Jaden Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuz uh, I heard this you told me this like uh, like put bits and pieces of this crazy Jaden Smith story. Jaden Smith is really cool. He's probably like one of the cuz okay, so um one of my other jobs I sell merch for bands. Mm-hmm. And he's I, sold merch for like tons of ev- bands. like yeah, yeah. so many bands. I think I think I've seen you at like so many different concerts even when I was like a teenager and I would like go to concerts yeah. when I was like 15 at the Vogue and Stuff like that. I saw you at King Giz, true, true. which was uh, a little bit after we met. And I was like, yo, Tim. And you're like, oh, you got you're... got the poster up in your room. Like, you're that guy. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, I kind of recognize you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The tall yeah. guy. Tall guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I sell merch for bands, and I sold merch for Jaden Smith. Um, I had heard that, like, I think they're, like, Scientologists, the family. Really? But... Yeah, like Will so. and Willow? Yeah, I feel like they... Okay, I don't want to say anything because I have not... <laughs> but we're not Googling stuff. But I thought they would be weird. Anyway, what I knew about Jaden at the time was that he tweeted lots of weird stuff. Okay. And yeah, like, yeah, he had like the... It, during that time, I think... I, I don't I, It was probably, what, like 2017? 20, yeah, something around something there. Like 20, 2018, probably. He was probably. putting like... Uh, how our mirror is real if our eyes aren't. Yeah, and, yeah. And that video of him talking about the steps, and he's like, and then you light, you step on this step, and it lights up, and you go, you know. Yeah, I thought he was gonna be like the weirdest person yeah. in the world, and like in my line of work, you get to meet ce- celebrities and stuff, mm-hmm. like, and sometimes they are super fucking weird. Yeah. Sometimes they are the chillest, nicest people ever. Yeah. Sometimes you like they're total fucking assholes. Yeah. Right, and like. The like Jaden Smith, I was expecting to be really, really weird. I actually didn't expect to see him. Really, mm-hmm. I thought for sure he's such a big celebrity. He's fa- he's famous for being Will Smith, yeah Will Smith's like, kid, right? So he's also a very talented individual. You know, yeah. like, he has his own uh, he has his own name for himself. But but they asked me to show up at the Will venue super early. Like yeah. I think like three p.m. or oh something. Oh my god! And he I was wasn't like, playing till like ten or something. Yeah, and I'm on a flat rate usually, so <laughs> I was like, hold on, like make sure I'm on hourly. So I showed up at like they paid you hourly from yeah, three. They paid me hourly, and Damn. I showed up at like three or something, and there was like literally like a tour bus up front, mm-hmm. like probably like twenty teens who were there, like super super excited, like waiting for them yeah, yeah yeah like all these teens like really really hyped. The show's yeah. nineteen plus because it's at Imperial yeah, and um, I went into the venue like oh my god like what the fuck there's all these people outside yeah there's no way Jaden is here. He was actually on stage sound checking, mm. like it's like you know it's like a backing track, right? So yeah. he's like just going check, check, <laughs> and I was like, he doesn't need to be there doing that. Like, why is he <laughs> like? That's the talent, you know. That guy should be resting. That's great. Why is he standing on stage just going check, check? <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's weird. And then he came out. And he was like, hey, I'm Jaden. Like, nice to meet you. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm Tim. And he was like. Like, ask me, like, you know, really genuine questions. Mm-hmm. Like, listen to me. Like, he was, like, having a real conversation with me. And I was, like, thinking, this guy is, like, really lucid. And, like, yeah. I thought for sure he would be super fucking weird. Mm-hmm. But he, um, yeah, he sort of, like, was really normal, really cool. And he, like, showed me a bunch of designs. He pulled out his laptop and was, like, hey, I've got all these designs i've done for like the next merch he's like you're a merch seller like can you like weigh in on like what the better designs are so he like showed me like you know eight different designs and was like oh pick this one or i picked that one and he was like okay yeah i'm gonna get these ones printed or whatever beautiful and uh and then he was like hey can we like bring these kids inside like the show's not on yet and the venue was like uh sure so they like let all these teens inside for free like 
and it was a 19 plus show, plus show so they yeah, wouldn't yeah. have been able to go to the they actual couldn't go show. To the show so yeah they just wanted to be there to like see him yeah walk so through. he like met all of them was Beautiful. really really chill he then wow. went on stage with a guitar on and played like they put up all the visuals of a big projector with like lions running through the savannah and shit oh my and God. he played like an entire set like playing electric guitar wow. and singing and um i was talking to his manager i was like does he do this like every night and he was like no i've never seen him do that before <laughs> he, he was like just like he just wanted to meet them or whatever and like he played like a whole mini show wow. and i was like oh it's like cool they got to see some of the show yeah and he was like yeah. oh he doesn't even play a guitar in the show he just like has it yeah just, just and i was like what like so he's playing like all different stuff than at the show or whatever weird. it was really weird like the Super i mean like weird. and yeah. it, it's sort of the behavior of like what you think like a crazy person would be like like a really weird rich famous person yeah but then he actually was super normal really cool to talk to yeah. and then and just came up to like i mean like it is it's you know it's you it's tim but yeah, uh yeah. he was just coming up to like you know yeah, he a, like merch, rem- a merch vendor yeah yeah he like remembered and, my name and talked to me and yeah then, and was like oh like this let's talk to this guy you yeah. know and like he had no you know actual he, reason to do that other than just being genuine and just yeah he was a, super cool and he like asked me he was like yeah. oh like where should i go for like uh, vegetarian food after the show. Beautiful. And I was like, well, the Nom is probably like the only place that's open. He's like, oh, I love the Nom. He's like, I used to live in Vancouver for like four months when I was like filming a movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I used to go there all the time. So he's like, I'm going to the Nom. And then um, he was like, I told my like manager to take care of you or whatever. So like, um, I went out with his manager and like his security guard and Jaden like rolled solo out to the Nom or whatever. <laughs> and like, we went out for like drinks, went to the Kiefer and wow. And then, uh, yeah, his manager was like, oh, yeah, Jaden just texted me, said he's paying for all your stuff, so, like, do whatever you want. Oh, and I was like, what? Like, beautiful. What a, what a chill dude. Yeah. And then uh, when Willow Smith came through, mm-hmm. um, they called me and were like, hey, do you want to do Willow? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. And, and like, the guy who was, like, Willow Smith's tour manager was, like, this dude who was, like, maybe, like, 21 or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like what's up with this family? They're, like, so chill. Yeah. Like, so chill to work Employing with. Employing a 21-year-old like, to manage And the guy was, like, tour. he's, like, he's, like, I don't know, like, six months ago, I was working at, like, a shoe store in L.A., and he's, like, you know, the apparently Will Smith owns, like, a brand of water, and he's, like, yeah, we were selling, like, Will Smith water at the shoe store, and he's, like, this guy used to show up, like, with the water, and it was uh, Jaden's, like, tour manager or whatever. Mm. I think Dave is his name. And he, um... And he used to show up with the water to yeah. drop it off. And he's like, then one day, like, I got fired or whatever. Like, or, you know, I got laid off. And I was, like, heading back home. Like, he's like, I was going to have to leave L.A. because I didn't have a job. I was broke. Yeah. And, he, and then this guy said, hey, where is uh, Mark? And he goes, well, Mark got fired or whatever. And he's like, suddenly I got a phone call from him, from this Will Smith's <laughs> music manager, who was like, hey, do you want to do you want to come work for Will Smith, because he just liked this guy. And so now... That is so crazy. So then the guy is like, yeah, a couple months later, I'm Willow Smith's tour manager going wow. on tour. And the guy was super chill. He was a nice dude. After the show, he was like, yeah, let's hang out. And like, just really super nice, easy to work with. Mm-hmm. You know, you can see like the way that... I don't know. I don't know shit about that family. I don't know anything about them. But like, yeah. I would do any of their shows because it was so so nice to work with them so easy to, mm-hmm. to work with them and they were like every single person remembered my name yeah talked to me they like requested me specifically for the next show yeah so yeah that's beautiful i'm a fan I, if will smith ever comes through doing uh fresh prince or whatever i'm happy to <laughs> to um that would be a crazy tour will smith coming through they were doing like fresh prince uh shirts and the guy said uh the guy mark or whatever he's like oh at, yeah at which tour um well they were doing it around the time i did the Willow Smith show. Oh, but the okay. guy was like, oh, I just like said to him, oh, yeah, like, why don't you make Fresh Prince jerseys or whatever? Mm-hmm. And they were like, okay. And they just like made them and they're like, yeah, we like sold them out in like, you know, a couple days or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the dude was like, he's like, everyone was really happy, you know, like, <laughs> it was just like, you know, it's so random. He, like, they hadn't thought of the idea of doing Fresh Prince yeah. merch or whatever. Yeah, they're like, oh, actually, that's a yeah, great, yeah, idea. great idea. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's my Jaden Smith story. That's a great story. I know, I right? love that story. You know what? There's some bands, like, there's a band that I worked with once 
and they were such fucking assholes. I can't even listen to their music. Mm. Like um, local band? No, no, like a a punk band from like uh, the states, and they. Mm. I was, like, always a fan. They came through. I was really excited to work with them. Mm-hmm. The guy was so cheap. He tried to get me to, like, rip off the venue for, like, the venue's cut or whatever. Oh, my God. And, like, he was, like... He are, was we just na- like are we name-dropping? It was face-to-face. Face-to-face. Yeah, fuck that guy. If you're if you're the singer of face-to-face or you're listening to the Desk Jockeys podcast, fuck you. Yeah, the Desk Jockey podcast doesn't fuck with face-to-face. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. the, um, so anyways, they were, like, super weird and really shitty, and I hated working with them. Mm-hmm. And then, so, like, I don't even listen to their music anymore. But then someone like Jaden Smith, I had, like, no real interest in his music before, and now I listen to it pretty often, you totally. know? And, like, I feel good about listening to it just because I don't know anything about him, but my experience with him mm-hmm. was good. Yeah, you know? and you know it at least, like... And same with Willow Smith. Really, really nice. She's and, super talented. Yeah, Her super, music is really oh cool. Oh, my God. You heard that song, uh, uh, what's it called, Meet Me at Our Spot? I think with so. The anxiety. Is it on the new album? Or? It's on the Anxiety album. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, like, I think uh, Willow's, like, featured on it. Oh, cool, cool. It's wild good. Have you heard the song with uh, with Ayla on the... No. Like, you know, Ayla from... Yeah, from yeah. Lodic, yeah. Um, yeah, she featured on uh, Willow's, I think Willow's new album. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, she had a song with her. And it's it's amazing. It's I, I, di- I didn't, like, expect Willow to play such, like, heavy music in some of her stuff. Like, it's actually, like, well, you know, it's, it's, like, it's, like, rock. It's, like, very, well, like... Well, Jada's a rocker. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, I mean, makes sense. But, yeah, like, um, I was talking with, I think, uh, Mark, the uh, Willow's tour manager or whatever. Mm-hmm. He was, like, yeah, well, like, Willow was on tour doing whip my hair back and forth she fucking just like shaved her head so i'm not doing this anymore yeah like good luck getting me to whip my hair now or whatever yeah good for her and they were like okay go home and like you know she doesn't need the money right so like no. she just went home and and then she was like i'm not working with like all these random studio musicians so mm-hmm. she like called up like one of her friends and got together like a band of like you know, studio musicians that were all like her age. Yeah. Like, it was an all female band. People that she could actually like. like people that she actually interact wanted to with. hang out with yeah. or whatever, right? So they're right. all fucking ripping musicians. Yeah. But like, it's not like. Well, just, I mean, they're playing with, yeah. with Willow. It's like, not like a not... random band, but totally. like, but they're all like people her age that she actually wants to hang out with. Yeah. And then like she went back on tour doing different style music or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you got to respect someone who knows what they want and has like, yeah. The, you know, is willing to. To be like, you know what? I'm not playing this game. I'm mm-hmm. doing my own thing or whatever. Totally. And people will always react to that genuine experience. They mm-hmm. keep bringing it back to that, you know? Yeah. Like, if you have, if I think every person has the ability to to be genuine and to, like, let their true self be known. Yeah. It is difficult to do, you know? Mm-hmm. It is hard to, to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But when you make yourself vulnerable, like, people do react to it. Like, totally. I always say, like, with my music and... um as Tim the Mute, like, it's not always easy to listen to. It's not always easy to, like, hear some of the, like, more um, sensitive subjects that I sing about. Totally. But, like, like you know you're, you're, that you're hearing someone who really believes what they're saying. Yeah. And you know that you're hearing from a genuine, like, point yeah. of view. You know? And that ties into with what I was talking about earlier mm-hmm. with, like, something that I noticed first when I met you. Is like not only is that like the the honesty, but also like um, within that honesty was like you being very like open, very vulnerable about mm-hmm. like anything that you felt that you wanted to talk about at that moment. Like I remember when we were at uh, we were at the uh, that little like play, that little park with like the the ping pong tables and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. And I remember you like you were like reading us poetry and then afterwards you like went on this big speech for like probably like half an hour (laughs) about something and I was like this is amazing like this is like I I, people don't really ever do that and it's so amazing to see that like when you were a kid you felt so introverted and like you Mm. you knew that there was like a part of you that was able to be open and like express yourself openly and like to be like a people person and everything like that like you felt it like yeah. there, there was something inside of you that was able to do that but you felt that you weren't able to fully express yourself just within the circumstances 100%. so like it's beautiful to see that like you've come to you know a later point in your life and that like you're actually fully able to feel or not i don't know how far along you on your process you know everyone you know has so much you know, shit to even deal with when, you know, when they're in their 60s and their yeah, 70s, yeah. you know what I mean? The, the the progress never really ends, you know, it just kind of keeps going. That's kind of the whole point. But 
um, that is really beautiful to see that, like, um, you know, you've you've gotten to the point where you're able to, you know, captivate, like, people, you know what I mean, right in front of you and have, like, a very genuine, honest moment and be able to express yourself in, like, a comfortable way and to feel that you are comfortable with, with yourself and what you're talking about. That's, that's really cool. Thank you. You know, I'm still growing and, like, I think... <clears throat> To, you know, to wrap up my time on the pod here, whatever, mm-hmm. like, um, I think, like, it's hard to be genuine. Like, yeah. yes, it's hard to be vulnerable. But, like, I think that if the, you're listening to this and you um, you struggle with stuff like that, like, if mm-hmm. you can really articulate yourself, if you can show people who you are, then people will always respond to it. My, my records, you know, like, they're not heard by, like, a lot of people. Mm. But I know... Because I find records like this in bargain bins and totally. whatever yard sales or whatever, you find totally. a record that has, like, you can tell when someone is just a genuine mm-hmm. person, a genuine like songwriter, someone who can like from their who's soul. really talking about what happened yes. to them or whatever. Yeah, and people sing from their heart, like that will always have an audience because yeah. I find records like, and if you make a record, I'll find it one day. You know yeah. what I mean? If you make a record that is like truly about your life and truly mm-hmm. heartfelt and you're able to like you have the talent to like be vulnerable and to be yourself yeah. on a record someone will find it and will fall in love with it yeah in the same way that like if if you're a genuine person you're willing to be vulnerable people will fall in love with you and people will be happy to be around you and glad that you're in their life mm-hmm. that's beautiful that's a great way to end the podcast thanks so much for having me thank you very it's much been a for being here fantastic day at the office yeah Oh, we're gonna, oh uh, no, yeah. we can stop. That's for the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. All right. Awesome. That was great. Oh, thanks for having me.